Hello, friendo. Welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skidviz. In this video, I want to show you a way to start making games in Unity as quickly as possible. But before we do, please hit that like and subscribe button so I know you care. All right, let's get going. Recently, I was watching a GDC talk by Gwen Frey. In it, she describes the journey she took to release her game, Kind. Uh, it cost her about $400,000 to make that game, and it's pretty much available everywhere. The impressive thing though, to me at least, is that she mentioned using Unreal Engine's Blueprint. Now if you don't know what Blueprint is, don't worry about it, I got your back. Uh, Blueprint is a feature of the Unreal Engine, right, which lets you make games with little to no coding. You just drag and drop things with their visual interface. I for one was like super impressed, right? You don't you don't really see a lot of stories or hear a lot of stories about people using tools like that. Um, it did, however, remind me of a mindset that I've encountered from some people who said they wanted to make games, um, and that belief is that if you don't code every line in your game, you're not a game developer. Now I can give you a thousand reasons, probably more, why that's bullshit. Forgive the French, but. We don't have that kind of time. I do, however, have time to give you a few reasons. All right, reason number one, time itself. Making a game takes time, a lot of it. In her own example, it took two and a half years to make that simple looking puzzle game, right? So you're taking advantage of every tool you can to speed up your development is essential if you want to get your game out there in a reasonable amount of time. Reason number two, what are you trying to be? A game developer or a game programmer, right? What's the difference? A programmer is someone whose main focus is the code. Maybe they want to make the most efficient way to solve a problem or they want to invent a new solution to a problem people didn't even know existed. Coders solve problems, usually their own. A game developer, however, right? The focus is more on the experience. I have a hundred stories in my head that I want to tell. And I want you to experience that story in a way that fits into video games more than it would into a book or a movie or some other medium. Maybe you're not so much interested in telling stories, but crafting experiences. The way the creators of Tetris or Dance Dance Revolution or Wii Sports or even Half-Life Alex, Alex, Alex did, right? They didn't want to tell a story per se, but they expose so many people to a new way to enjoy the medium, right? And that's just as valuable, if not more so. So not viewing yourself as a game developer if you're using something like Blueprint is dumb, right? We can just agree to that. So how do we do this in Unity? Well, we're in luck. There are several great tools available like Bolt or Playmaker, but in this particular video, I'm going to focus on something called Game Creator. And I like Game Creator because it lets me get up and running quick, just like the others, but it also lets me bring in my programming skills if I need to do something that it currently doesn't, right? All right, so enough talking. Let's just go ahead and jump in and I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Let's do it. All right, so here we are. We've got a brand new empty Unity project. Uh, first thing we need to do is import the game creator assets. So we go to the asset store, find it, and bring it in. Okay, now that that's imported, you'll see it right there in the gizmos folder under assets. You'll also see it up here in the menu, game creator. So let's go into our game or into our scene, and you'll see this little new menu that pops up here, this little bar, um, and that lets you instantiate the game creator objects pretty quickly. But before we get there, uh, let's create a ground so that our characters can have a place to stand. So just a plane here, I uh, will stretch that out so we have some room. Cool. Now, I'm also going to throw in some lights, just some point lights, so that our scene is better illuminated. 
All right, so we've got our plane set up. Now, if I click on this, these one of these icons here, the one that looks like the Sims icon, that's gonna create a player. And that will be our controllable character. So if I go ahead and click that, you'll see a new character appears on the screen in the T-Pose. And um, it's got a nice model attached to it, colliders, all that good stuff. And if I hit play, right off the bat, you can see I can control this character with the keyboard, I can jump, and we are ready to go. Of course, this is not the character we want to play as, so we need to do something about this model. So I'm going to go back to the asset store and go to my assets. And I'm going to search for a soldier model that I like to use when I'm testing things and I'll import that. Cool. So now you see this Toon Soldiers demo. If you go into models, there's the model for that. So I'll go back into the scene and click on the player. And if you scroll down, you'll see this little box here under character model that says drop your 3D model. So I'm going to do just that. Just drop that model right into there and look at that. Just like that, we are good to go. We have a fully fleshed out 3D model. And if I hit play again, you'll see that I can control the model. Um, he still walks, he still jumps, he does what we would expect. He even has a nice little idle animation set up there. He's ready to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move him to a side over here. And I'm gonna click on another button. And it's the one right next to that player button. It says create character. And the difference between a character and a player is really simple. The player can be controlled and the characters can't. They're NPCs, bosses, enemies, whatever. Uh, so I'll go ahead and create a character and it'll do that same thing. It'll drop another T-posed robot looking thing on the screen. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the soldier. So as you can see, it says drop your 3D model on the character as well. So I'm going to drop the same soldier there. Boom. Now we're good to go there. And then I'm going to rename this character to Buddy. Right? We're going to give him a name. And I'm going to move him to the opposite side of the screen here. So we've got our player there and Buddy there. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to fix the camera because when I start this, you can see that the camera is just in a fixed position and uh, that's not how we do it, right? Not in this game. So this comes with really cool things called uh, camera motors. So if you right click, go to Game Creator, Other, you'll see Camera Motor. If I click this, it adds this camera motor object and it's set to Adventure Camera. Now Adventure Camera is the type of camera you would have in something like uh, Super Mario 64 or something, one of those 3D platformers where the camera is behind the character. So if I start that now, you'll see the camera system is already taken care of for me. I can pivot the camera around the character. I can zoom out and zoom in and the camera will follow me wherever I go. The one thing I don't like about this, which is just a personal preference, is that if I stop moving, the camera will recenter itself to the character's back, which is fine. Uh, a lot of people might want that, but I find it kind of annoying. So I'm gonna turn that off. And the way to do that is to go right into the camera motor and right there at the bottom it says auto reposition behind blah, blah, blah. So just uncheck that and we're good to go. Now, if you wanted to do a different type of camera, like a first person camera, uh, you can come in here and there's these different types of cameras. So if I set this to first person, now you won't see the character anymore. You'll see his point of view, right? So control that with the mouse, keyboard still works, right? That's not the kind of game we're building here. So we'll stop that, put this back to adventure camera. Now, um, this, the way this thing works is it's got 
several key components and they're the ones on the left side here and they're called triggers, conditions, and actions. I'm not gonna run through everything because who's got that kind of time, but I just wanna show you how quickly we can get something going. Um, so the first thing I wanna do here is create some barriers between the two characters. So I'm just gonna drop some cubes in here and stretch them out a bit. All right, what am I doing, right? So I'm gonna select the cubes that I just created and I'm gonna select the ground. I'm gonna mark them all as static because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a navigation mesh which will determine where the characters can walk. So now that we have them all selected, we can go into navigation and do a bake and do a bake. Where did that bake? Oh, I didn't hit bake. There we go. So you see that blue area on the map? Now that's the area that can be walked on by the NPC. So the next thing I wanna do is tell the NPC to walk over to me. And I'm gonna set a trigger for that. So I'm just gonna right click here, go to Game Creator and go to Trigger. And I'm gonna rename this one to Press G, right? So what a trigger does is it triggers something to start. So when I click on this, oops, I gotta go back to the inspector. If I click on this, it'll say what's going to activate this trigger and it's by default set to on start. We don't want that. We want to do it on key down. So if you type in key, you'll see all the different things that happen when you press key button. So I'm going to hit on key down. I'm going to change the key oops, from space, which is the default, to G. G for go. All right, so when I press G, what's going to happen? We're going to need an action. So that's this other button here or this other button over here. There's a million ways to get to it, but if I hit this, it'll create a new action for me and it'll nest it under the trigger. And I'm gonna call this walk to player. Cool. So this action has nothing assigned to it yet, but if I click on add action, it'll say, what action do you want to perform? And there's a bunch of these built in already. I'm just going to find the one that says move. So I type in move and you'll see move character. So once you pick that, it gives you a bunch of options. What character do you wanna move? Where do you wanna move him? So we wanna move buddy. So I'll just drag buddy into this character slot. And as far as moving to a position, we don't wanna to move to a specific XYZ position. We wanna to move to another character's transform. So we'll select transform. And we'll, we'll drag, drag down the, the player object into that transform. So now Buddy will move to wherever the player is, right? So that's it. Whenever I hit G, Buddy will walk over to me. Now I need to change one thing real quick because if I don't, let me show you what happens. So we've started the game and I'm gonna hit G. And as you can see, Buddy is trying to get to me, but he is not succeeding. So uh, I need to go to Buddy and come over to this section here for locomotion where it says can use navigation mesh. So once I hit that, um, I'm going to be able to have him come to wherever I am. So I'm just gonna move real quick over here and hit the G and you'll see he walks around that edge follows the nav mesh to get to where I was. All right, and now I'm gonna move over to the other one and do this again. Now, I'm sure you already can see how this could be very beneficial when you're prototyping or if you just wanna get something done quickly, you can do so much in so little time. This would take a lot of code and I haven't written a single line. So just like that, one of the things I am gonna change real quick is the distance, right? We go to walk to player, it says stop threshold. And that is basically how close Buddy needs to be in order to consider him having reached me. So right now he has to be right up on me, which is kind of uncomfortable. So I'm gonna set that to one 
and then we'll do it again. And this time he won't get too close. I forget to switch that camera thing. So still closer than I like, but not right on top of me. So that's pretty good. All right. So as you can see, with no coding at all, you can already make an escort mission. <laughs> so uh, I'm not gonna cover everything, but that should give you an idea of how simple it is to get things going. You can create other triggers for other things. You can affect animations. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll keep coming back. Uh, the links to everything I mentioned is in the description, so make sure to check those out. Thanks again for watching. I'm still Skibis, so peace out.